Eckhart Tolle had his own awakening. Now, not everybody knows who Eckhart Tolle is, but a, a whole bunch of people do. And um, one of the reasons why a lot of people may not be familiar with that name is his fame came about 20 years ago. So he's a little bit before probably even your time, Christina. Hmm. So, But today we're going to look at his awakening experience and I'm going to give a specific exercise people can do to duplicate that awakening. So that's where we're going to go today. I love this stuff. Let's do it. <laughs> so go ahead. Well, uh, welcome to Mastering Thought, where we talk about the mind, emotions, and relationships. And I'm here with Dr. Mark Waller. He's been a licensed marriage and family therapist for 25 years. I am Christina Black, a craniosacral therapist. And we are also human beings. <laughs> <laughs> the most important part. Now, if you um, have been to our channel before, like and subscribe, please. And uh, yeah, if you're new, then hang out with us for a little while and then press like and subscribe. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, Eckhart Tolle probably doesn't need an introduction, but uh, oh, let me, let should. me. Okay. I think you should introduce him. Okay. So um, uh, Eckhart Tolle, in 1997, he wrote this book called The Power of Now. And um, I think the book has sold 12 million copies. Uh, wow. Just a ginormous bestseller. And I swear to God, it's still a bestseller. And when I get new clients, I, I take them through some of his teachings. And you'd be surprised how many people actually have his book on their shelf. Oh. What's the percentage of people that read it? I, I, think, I think probably 30%. 20, maybe 20 to 30% of the people that are new clients, when they come in, have the book yeah. on their shelf and have either read it or are very familiar with it. That's wild. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's, it's a real thing. And so this is a picture of Eckhart Tolle. And um, the thing we're going to talk about today, I'm going to use his own words from his own awakening experience and this is from an interview he did um, with Dr. James, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this right, either Dottie or Doty, D-O-T-Y. Mm -hmm. And he's at Stanford. And they have, a, they have a, a special section down there where they do these conversations on compassion. And I will put the link for this. It's about an hour and a half interview, I believe. Wow. Uh, the, I think the first 13 minutes are where he describes his awakening. And so, you know, that's the part we're going to focus on here. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments so far? I mean, not yet. So I know that you're, you're not particularly f familiar with it, but you're familiar, right. you are familiar with the exercise that we're going to do today. Yes. And then at the end, of our presentation today, there will be a QR code with a free offer. And it's it's pretty special free offer. So anyway, let's let's get back to Tolly. Okay. And I hope this is not an eye test for uh, everybody, but Eckhart Tolle <laughs> is a spiritual teacher and author best known for his books, The Power of Now and A New Earth. He was born in Germany in 1948, which means he's actually a couple years older than I am, if that's even possible. And <laughs> Tolly experienced a profound personal transformation in his late 20s, which marked the beginning of his journey as a spiritual guide. Mm. And we're going to dissect that transformation today. And so Tolley's teaching focus uh, is on the importance of present moment awareness as a path to spiritual awakening. He emphasizes the detrimental impact of the ego and the mind's identification with thoughts and emotions, which is exactly where we're going to go today, which he argues leads to dysfunction and unnecessary suffering. And I completely, totally agree. 
you know, life is painful, but suffering is all the thinking we do about the pain. Right. And according to Tolley, true liberation and peace come from recognizing one's true identity beyond the ego, what he often describes as the inner stillness or the being that exists in the now. And let me put that in a little perspective, because when you're thinking, you're always in the remembered past or the imagined future. You really never are in the now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, he encourages the practices of meditation and conscious presence to help individuals trans, uh, transcend their mind's limitations, ultimately fostering a deeper sense of peace, connectedness, and enlightenment. But today, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a specific exercise to do, which will lead that lead to that transformation for you personally. And Christina, you've obviously already experienced this, so you mm -hmm. can kind of chime in about what that's all about. But I've discovered kind of a shortcut here uh, that I'm going to share with everybody. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't want to be dominating this. So. <laughs> All right. So let's let's get into now. What we're going to discuss next is Tolly's actual awakening experience out of his own mouth. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to quote. To hear that. I'm I'm going to quote this. So Tolly is depressed. He's suicidal. He wakes up at about two or three in the morning. And he has this thought, I can't live with myself any longer. And at that moment, these are his own, you know, pretty much 100% quote. At that moment, an inner separation happened. And we're going to talk about that separation between the unhappy self and a deeper sense of I or beingness. He says, I have been identified throughout my life with an unhappy mind-made entity which we call me, me in the head, consisting of self-talk in the mind. Everybody's familiar with the self-talk in the head. I sometimes call it the voice in the head, which are quite simply the automatic composite thought processes that never stop, that either comment on your sense perception. He says it's a running commentary. And if you don't recognize it, then... You, you are so identified with it that you don't even know that you have a running commentary on your life. You become the running commentary on your life. Mm -hmm. In other words, become totally identified with a composite thinking that never stops the voice in the head. So this is basically the human condition. Mm -hmm. We have identified ourselves with this voice in our heads that never stops talking. And this is where virtually all emotional psychological problems that aren't organic come from. Now I'm segregating, you know, personality disorders and things like, you know, ADHD and, and other stuff like that. Uh, but I'm talking about generally everyday, ordinary depression, anxiety, and stress and relationship problems. They all come from this running dialogue that's going on in our heads. And so he says here, it's a running commentary. If you don't recognize it, then you're so identified with it right. um, you that become you become it. the running commentary. And this is where garden variety mental and emotional problems come from, the running commentary that we have in our heads. Mm -hmm. So he, he says, there was this unhappy me... But that night, I disidentified from it and stood back from it. So what did he do? He separated from this me in the head in order to observe it because he had this weird thought. And he thought, what, is it, what does that mean? Are there two of me or one of me? I can't live with myself any longer. He questioned, who am I and who or what is that self that I cannot live with? So you can see in the way he's describing this that he had he had actually experienced a separation. Mm -hmm. 
So he he sees this unhappy me in his head saying, I can't live with myself any longer. And the observer that had stepped back that's watching this is like, well, this this is not right. Is am I am I that me that's talking, or am I the observer that's watching this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he says that brought about the separation. Then there was an I, and then this unhappy me was somehow recognized as not real. This mm-hmm. is huge. What he's saying here. And the next morning, I woke up feeling totally at peace. So here's the, the awakening is right here. Mm-hmm. That thought brought about the separation. And when the separation occurred, there was an I in the unhappy me in the head that was talking all the time. He, real, he realized was not real. And so he right. disidentified. And that was the awakening he experienced. Mm. Hmm. Comments so far? Just appreciating um, reading about his awakening after experiencing my own and seeing like what common threads there were. Well, talk about that for a second and and speak up just a little bit. Sure. Uh, Will you go back to the slide? Yeah. So there was this unhappy me, but that night I disidentified from it and stood back from it. And... Um, yeah, I was mid sentence when I realized like, wait a second, I don't believe what I'm saying. (laughs) But I knew like two seconds before that I had believed what I was saying. Interesting. So yeah, like just seeing both both sides of that. And then also go go back one more time. Um, yeah, that's when I felt the separation happened for me. And it was, for me, it was an I that was mischievous and a little bit of a trickster. And then the other me that just wanted to be genuine. Okay. So, so and was then, there a sense, was there a sense that the, there was a, there was an observer and a talker? Well, sure. Yeah. Because, because it was the observer that goes, wait a second, that's not what I believe. <laughs> right. And so it like called me out on my baloney. And um, and then I realized like, oh, this part of me that wanted to suggest that, it's not really me. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and then I did have total peace. Um, I had that experience in the morning, but I had it for the rest of the day. And I believe the next morning at least. Uh-huh. It, last, it lasted a good bit. Yeah. So, so the key concept here that you're talking about is there was an awareness that brought about a separation. Yeah. And the separation was between the observing I and the me in the head that was talking all the time. Right. And so let me, let me summarize this in two very important points here. Number one, these two points are separation and disidentification. And so what Tolly is saying, and Christina, what you're saying as well, is that the separation occurred, and then you immediately realized that this commentary in your head was not real. Yeah, it was very quick. It was like, okay, well, if not A, then I don't know. Maybe I'm not saying that right. But just like, yeah, if that's not me, then I, if that's not what I'm trying to say, then I don't want this to be like something that represents me. So I don't, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Right. Because it, you realize it was controlling you. Yeah. And it really wasn't helping me. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so this is the ego that, that totally talks about in his teaching and writing. So the mm-hmm. ego has a voice and it's speaking in your head and it's masquerading as yourself. And in the moment you separate from the voice in your head and observe it, when that separation truly occurs, you realize none of that is real and it doesn't need to control you anymore. Yeah. Now in my, if you look at the title for this, um, 
you know, this is being filtered through my experience teaching this to 5,000 people over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And in every single case where the person applied what I'm going to teach here in a second, what I'm going to share, uh, they experienced the same awakening totally did and the same awakening that you did. Mm -hmm. The separation from the voice in their head and the realization that that voice was not who they were. Mm -hmm. And um, I ran across this this uh, interview with Tolly. Gosh, it had to been five or six years ago, but I had already been teaching this all those years. And when I watched him explain this. Oh, interesting. Yeah, when I watched him explain this, I realized, holy cow, that's exactly what happened to me. And so I've got my own little take on it that, that helps people make this transition, I believe, quickly. And it kind of enhances and focuses in on Tolly's own awakening to take advantage of that. Okay. I just kind of assumed that he was an inspiration for you. I didn't know that you independently found this. Right. About uh, about 40 years ago, I had a, an identical awakening to Tolly. I thought you said I can't live with myself any longer in a different episode. <laughs> or I can't live with myself anymore. Or something like that. And you were like, what? How can I say that? Of course I could live with myself. That's the only way I can live. Right. That's the illusion. Exactly. And the self, the self that we think we're living with is a false self. It's the ego self. And of course, as you and I have talked about in many occasions, it is the self that's being driven by the limbic system, which is based in survival and fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And so that's why humankind right. is in such sad shape because we're all being driven by this ego mind that's talking in our heads and we believe it's who we truly are. Mm -hmm. And this is where all the trouble comes from. So let me go through this very, very extremely simple exercise that results in the awakening that Tolly is describing. Okay. Now you chime in here because you've already been through this process. And so, so the separation from thought, here's the key idea. The separation from thought leads to the disidentification from thought. And when this disidentification, um, and of course this is what it looks like, our thoughts. But when this disidentification occurs, we know, when that voice in your head speaks, we no longer believe it's us and we don't pay any attention to it anymore. Right. You can sort of master your brain. Right. That's why we call this channel Mastering Thought. Yes. <laughs> yes. I wanted everybody else to know that. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at this. See, here's the exercise. And those of you listening, try this right now. Just step back and notice your next thought. Now, maybe the next thought is, I wonder what I'm going to have for lunch. Or, I really don't like the flavor of this toothpaste. Or whatever random thought there is. In other words, what you're doing in this exercise is you're becoming the observer of your own mental activity. And the question becomes, what happens to the voice in your head when you separate and observe it? And of course, you understand the answer to that question. Mm hmm I do. Are you wanting this to be rhetorical or do you want me to answer it? No, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to take away your flair, you know. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. I'm waiting. No, I'd rather hear it from um, you than from me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you start to observe your thoughts? Is that what you're was that the question? Right. When what what happened the first time you did this exercise, what happened to the voice in your head? Oh, yeah. Um, it just goes away. Right. So every time you do this, you step back and notice the voice in your head. The instant you observe it, it stops. 
Right. Now, now I'm going to, at the end of this video, I'm going to link some other videos that we've done that explain this in great detail, what the brain is doing. This is actually switching two networks, the task positive network and the default mode network. And that's why the voice goes away. And we explain that mm -hmm. in another video uh, right. in, in detail. So what you're doing is you're practicing this separation, the same separation totally experienced. Yeah. So you have this thought, I wonder how hot it's going to be tomorrow. And as you're noticing that you're thinking, in order to notice that you're thinking, you have to step back and separate from it in order to observe it. And it mm -hmm. ironically turns out that the instant you do that, the voice in your head stops instantly. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this, it doesn't stop in mid-sentence, it stops in mid-word. It's like somebody just pulls the plug. Mm -hmm. And so that's the yeah. exercise. Now, so in other words, what you're doing is you're observing, you're self-observing. Now there's a I don't know how helpful that is, but let me give you some do's and don'ts. <laughs> <laughs> so do this exercise, only do this three or four, two or three times in the morning, in the afternoon or evening. Like, now, why am I saying times that? times in a day or are you meaning like six-ish, nine-ish times a day? Uh, even if you only do it two times a day, it doesn't matter. It's really important. Okay. It's really important that this is just simply effortless. This is not meditation. You do not need to build an altar in the corner. Uh, you, you know, it, this is this is a very casual thing. Okay. And and the more casual, it's better. You know, you know how we humans are. We want to turn anything, everything into a project. Complicated. This is not a project. This is a very simple, elegant little exercise. So only do this exercise two or three times in the morning or the, or the afternoon. It's not like you're watching every thought. That is, do not do that. That will not result in, in the awakening. Mm. Now this one, next, this next one is extremely critical. Only do this exercise on simple, trivial, everyday thoughts. Now, why are we doing that? We're doing that uh, because, go ahead. Oh, well, I think you said when you get involved in the emotions, it's like harder to just complete the exercise. Exactly. exactly. Ex excellent. So it's like, so, oh no, if it like a good one would be, I need to get milk from the store, I think was one of your examples. Right. And a bad one would be, oh, I better get milk before my, I run out and my kid freaks out. That would not be one that you would right. do. Right. Yeah. And so so what people what people misunderstand is that we're trying to have better thoughts or we're trying to improve our thoughts. We're trying to stop the thoughts. We're having control over the thoughts. None of those things is true. What we're trying to do is simply separate from the thought by becoming the observer. Right. And the simplest thoughts to separate from are the most benign everyday thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just reassure everybody who's listening, and, and you can speak from your own experience, Christina, but, but this transformation happens in days, not weeks. I don't remember how long it took me. I think it was between two and three weeks for me. Okay, well. But I think I also was doing it wrong at first. Like, we were doing all the, we did two don't do this videos. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I learned something from each one. And shortly after is right. when I had my awakening, I think. I'm, I'm glad you made that distinction because the biggest hurdle that I have with people is teaching them how actually simple this is. Yeah, I kept wanting to make it so much harder. Right. And yeah. as soon as they realize what this is doing and how simple it is, literally the transformation happens within days or within just a few days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens as I'm saying it to them. 
they're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. So they the, the problem is that, that, that our minds wants to make this really complicated. Yeah. You got to fight that urge. Is that another ego thing, do you think? Uh, yeah. And for some people, especially unicorns, it, it gets into their ego defenses, which is to avoid conflict and analyze things and be even more in their heads because they're operating from fear. And so just doing something simple demands that they let go and seemingly lose control. Okay. And since they're in their minds spinning all the time, this seems like it's a really threatening process because it's so simple. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Back to this. So when the voice number three here, when the voice goes away, that is the end of the exercise. So you're having this thought, I need to get dog food at the store. And as soon as you notice you're saying that in your head, it goes away. And that's the, the instant it goes away, that's the end. That's it. No mm -hmm. more. Exercise completed. What's that? Exercise completed. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and you don't have to do it again. Now, the thing people don't understand is that the instant the voice stops, it will start up again. We don't care about that. That is not part of the exercise. We mm -hmm. are not trying to permanently silence the voice. Mm -hmm. All we're trying to do is practice being separate and observing the voice. Mm -hmm. That's the key to the transformation. Right. And so, and so do not analyze or look for an outcome or overthink. And finally, don't use this to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. So, and this is very counterintuitive, especially for people who come to me as a therapist, they're experiencing anxiety, they're, they're in a crisis, whatever. And what I'm teaching them is a very abstract thing that leads to transformation, but it doesn't seem like it directly is solving the problem. Right. And so if you're sitting out here and listening to this, and you're thinking, yeah, but I want a better relationship. How does this get a better relationship? Well, it, right. it does, but not in the way you think it does. And so if you're waiting until you have an argument with your boyfriend, you know, to, oh, I need, now I need to do the thought watching. That is not going to work. Don't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Do it so, on a schedule just because and when you're not worked up. I, li I like the way you said that just because, you know, it's like you go to a doctor and, and you say, I'm not feeling good. And he says, well, here, take this pill. Well, when you take the pill, you do it just because he said to take the pill. Mm -hmm. Not because you're going to instantly have a outcome that you can observe. Right. That's the same thing with this. So let's go back to this. There's the exercise again. You step back and notice your next thought. And honestly, by the way, you'd be surprised how many people's next thought is, what if I don't have a thought? <laughs> that is the next thought. That's a freebie, thought. you guys. That's a freebie. <laughs> so, you're, uh, you know, uh, this reminds me of, I had this client and I did a video about her a while back uh, on anxiety and she was so anxious, she couldn't get in the, in the uh, car to take her children to the grocery store anymore. She was mm -hmm. home ridden, you know, and, um, I kept trying to teach this exercise to her. And every time I would say to her, okay, just wait for the next thought. This weird look would go across her face. And I said, do you want me to tell you what your next thought is? And she said, yes, please. Cause she's <laughs> in there searching for the next thought. And I said, your next thought was, what if I don't have a thought? And she looked at me and she said, oh my God, that was my next thought. The <laughs> next week, she was back in the car taking the kids to the grocery store. Yeah. Because she was talking in her head and didn't even realize it was a thought. And thoughts aren't you. 
So here's the exercise again. Just step back and create that separation and notice your next thought. And then notice that the instant you observe the voice in your head, it goes silent. And then that's the end of the exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just that simple. Yeah. Now, is it? I'm just curious. Is it interesting to you, Christina, that that totally went through exactly the same thing that you did? I mean, yes, certainly. But also, it's kind of what I expect. It's like trust but verify. It's right, like right. Why I was like, oh, like totally reading his story. But yeah, I mean, I think this, from what you've described, this is like how this works. Right. Well, certainly how it can work. I mean, there are probably other ways to become awakened. awakened. I, I don't know. You know, some people you know, have this light bulb moment based on other things, but this is very intentional and it, and it works every single time for somebody who will get out of their head and just do the exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would be curious sometime with you to discuss what uh, we call in craniosacral, your inner wisdom or inner physician. Cause I would be curious to see how much of it is the observer and uh and we describe it um just in a nutshell the part of you that exists inside of you that is already healed already whole already knows what you need and is always like it always has your back basically so i would i would say that's exactly the same thing mm -hmm. that that is the i that Tolly is talking about mm-hmm and see, the okay. reason why we're not experiencing that is because we're busy in our heads doing other things. Right. Right. And w when we uh, interact with it, it's when they're, the client on the table is in a more um, relaxed state. They're right. in like a light trance. Mm -hmm. And so it calms their conscious mind and then they can allow that deeper truth speaker to talk to them. That, uh, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's kind of wrap this up, but I want to get to the free offer here. Um, so where am I? There we go. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. And oh, by the way, uh, here are my books and the process that we went through today is outlined in the book, Mastering Thought. So if you want to kind of take a deep dive into it, um, that book is a detailed explanation with examples and so forth as to, uh, you know, the voice in your head and how you overcome it and experience this awakening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love it. And so here is the offer. If you scan the QR code you see up there, it will take you to a form and I need the basic information from the form. It doesn't really matter how you fill it out, but at the end of the form, there's a question of, that says comment. And when you get to that portion, just say free thought watching. And Christina or I will contact you and we will personally set up either an individual or, or a group call where we take you through this thought watching exercise so you thoroughly understand what it is and how it works. Yeah, I know for me, it was so great having access to you, Mark, while I was going through this because you would, we would even talk and you'd be like, so how's it going? And then I'd give you an example and you're like, no, you're doing that wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you'll talk to our friends that contact us like this, but that's just kind of the relationship Mark and I have. But um, he would say, no, you're doing it wrong. And for me, it was like, oh, I am? Oh, okay, well, let's get this right. And so I think you corrected me about three or four times before I was doing it right. Yeah, and the problem is, is that, you know, we humans are so up in our heads talking to ourselves and, and interpreting things through a filter and 
all this, it, it's hard to even have a simple conversation without all that interference. Mm -hmm. And so what, what people do is when, when I teach them this exercise, or even when they watch this video, is they start making assumptions. Right. Oh, that's just like meditation, or that's just like, uh, you know, whatever. And they're not fully listening to the instructions. And right. so the free offer, and I'll, I'll put the QR code back up, the free offer is, you know, look, everybody, I'm just trying to leave it all on the field. You know, I've been at this for 25 years. Yeah. I don't know if a legacy is even important in this life, but this is what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And if that means we're going to all get on Zoom and I'm going to teach this to you, that's what I want to do. And if you want to take advantage of that, I'm here to do that. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what the offer is. Yeah. And I'm not sure we covered it, but uh, this, I know you said this brings an awakening, but also an awakening helps you if you have depression, anxiety. Uh, what else? Depression, anxiety, stress, all of it comes from stress. thoughts. Right. And, and the big one, relationship problems. Relation all are yeah, related totally. to this. Totally. Yeah, so if you um, can think of someone that you want to share this episode with, please send it over and, you know, either they can at least hear this or they can do the QR code themselves. So that okay. is what my humble offer is for you, world. <laughs> this really works. This is not just some self-help stuff. This actually will change the way you relate to your own thinking. Mm -hmm, for it's sure. It's very big. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything in closing? It's been another great one, Mark. Good job. <laughs> That's, I get a gold star. Okay. You get a gold star. And everybody who's still hearing this part, it means you're still here and you get a gold star too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Anora. -bye. Bye,